Hi, my name is Rickard, and someone in the Nuclei Academy, which is my exclusive Photoshop community, asked me how I would make a spinning propeller effect if my photo only had still propellers. So in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so this is the effect that I ultimately want to create. And you can see here that this middle element uh, almost looks like it's just standing still. And then we have the propeller going around, creating this almost circular effect. And what I want to do is I want to create that effect, but for a still image. The first thing I want to do is I want to just extend the image so that I have um, enough space to make a full circle here. So to do that, I'm going to use the generative expand. So I'm going to go to my crop tool with C, change my fill to generative expand, and then just extend this up and to the sides just enough so that I have a full circle there. I'm going to hit OK and let's see what it gives us. All right, let's look at our options. And I think that looks good. Seems like it doesn't know what to do with this thing back there. So what we might do is just select this one. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Just merge all these together with shift command E so that it's all on one layer. And then I'm going to take this element down here and just have the AI generate that. Okay. Okay, so that looks good. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of these propellers and put them on their own layer and you'll see why in a second. So to do that, um, well first let's just go ahead and merge these two and then I'm going to use the pen tool to separate these. So I'm going to go on to my pen tool. I also want this to be on its own layer so maybe I'll do that first. Generally, when it comes to compositing in Photoshop, separating, separating things into layers is always going to be part of that workflow. Because so once you have things in layers, you can do a lot more when it comes to manipulating them and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and copy this. There you go. Let's make selection and I'm going to do command J and we'll call this prop center. And then I also want to copy this propeller right here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's pretty good. Let's right mouse click, make selection, go back here, command J and we'll call this prop one. And then I'm also going to select that prop two. And for this, um, we can actually use the AI in Photoshop. So rather than doing this selection manually, I'm just going to go to my object selection tool and make a selection around it. I uh, don't know why we're having a program error, maybe because I was on the wrong layer there. All right, that's good. Let's go off this tool, do Command J again, and then I'm going to call this Prop 2. And then what I want to do is I want to hold down Command and then Shift on the second layer, just so that I have both of those propellers selected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand my selection by 10 pixels and then do a generative fill. And here, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the propellers. So hopefully by just leaving my prompt blank, it's going to know that and try to fill in with contextual information to get rid of the propellers. It got rid of one, but oh, well, hang on. It did get rid of it. OK, so that looks really good. Let's go ahead and put this underneath our layers here and I'm going to merge it in with this. So we just have one layer here that's our plane. Oops, not planet, plane. Okay, so now I'm going to take my two props and I'm going to 
hold down option, just put those on one layer with Command E. I'm saving my originals just in case I need to go back to them. But now I have my propellers on one layer here. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to drag this kind of to the center and I want to transform this and try to center it so that perspective wise, we're kind of looking at it straight on. So let's go ahead and just make a reference layer here. Um, I just want this to kind of get rid of my background so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm also going to just make a circle from kind of the center out to the edge of that propeller. So about there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make another solid color because this is, uh, because I made my selection first, it's gonna take into account my selection and turn that into a mask. Okay, so then with transform, I wanna start transforming this I want to kind of keep the center where it is, meaning I don't want to move the center of the propeller. I just want to change the perspective here so that this is a little bit closer to kind of a center. So basically, as I turn this, I want my elements to stay inside here. So. Let's turn it to there and then maybe make some adjustments here. And you can see that as I'm turning this from the center point, it's staying pretty much in the center there. So that's kind of what I want. Next thing I'm going to do is let's just make this straight. Maybe we'll just adjust it a tiny bit there. Okay. Now what I can do is I can turn off that reference. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. And now I want to do the spinning motion. I'm going to go ahead and make one more copy of this just in case I need to go back. And then I'm going to go to filter blur. And here I want to use radial blur. Um, and what I might do is actually use spin blur, which is similar to a radial blur but you have a little more control. And what I'm gonna do here is extend it out and center my elements here so that it's right between the two, like this. And we want this extended out so that the entire propeller is included within our spin. And then we're just gonna increase the spin here to 360. And that might be a little too much. Let's try backing down a bit, maybe to 180, see what that gives us. No. Okay, so we do need to spin it more. Let's try like there. We'll go down a little bit. I do like these darker parts. Um, if we look at our reference, it actually had those. So that's a nice touch of realism there. I'm going to turn this down just a little more. So I can also do it here. Okay, so a little more than that. Maybe 238-ish. Okay, so that's about right. Let's hit OK. And you can tell that this is just not, um, we've blurred out the pixels so much, trying to stretch them over so much space that they've become very transparent. So to fix that, what we'll do is we'll just make a bunch of copies of this. After it's done blurring, which it is definitely taking its sweet old time here, we'll just make a bunch of copies until we kind of get the the shape and texture of that propeller. I'm going to go ahead and merge all these copies into one. And then what we can do is turn on our original layers again. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. That way, whatever transform I apply to it, I can always go back and adjust. Okay, then I'm going to line up my center here. 
and then do Command T for transform. And then basically I wanna take this and adjust it to the shape of my plane and the perspective of my plane. So I can even use this larger circle here as kind of a reference for me in terms of how this should be shaped. Something like this. And I'm holding down command as I'm doing this, which allows me to adjust these with a little more freedom. I think something like this. And then we can turn on our top propeller element, turn off our other propellers, and now you can see it looks like that propeller is spinning. And if we like, we can always make a second copy of this if we want it to be a little bit less transparent. What we could also do here is inside here, make another copy and then even maybe add a curve layer to kind of bring out as much as that of that yellow as possible. So here I'm just bringing up the bottom of my curve. That's gonna make everything lighter go ahead and save this that'll update right away and obviously you can adjust this to kind of the effect that you want i'm also seeing we're having quite a lot of banding in here so what i might do is go in here and to fix that banding issue i'm going to just go ahead take both of these layers merge them into one and it's a pretty well centered thing so i can just go to filter blur and i'm going to do a radial blur and we're going to do a spin and we'll just do maybe 15 pixels and that'll just soften it up a bit and then let's go ahead and save this okay so that got rid of that banding issue and there you can see we've got now a spinning propeller effect Okay, and the last thing I wanna do here is just maybe accentuate our uh, two top and bottom propellers. I'm gonna do that just by going on my lasso tool. Make sure I'm on that prop one layer, hold down option, kind of go, and I'm following the existing lines. And we'll select this one out, something like this. And then I can just add a mask to this prop layer by holding down option. Now there you can see obviously it's too much, but if I go to my properties for my mask, I can take down the density. That'll show this one a little more, maybe to about there. And then I can increase the feather, which will give me a blur between those elements. And I can adjust how much I want that. And I think somewhere around there looks good. Let me adjust this a little bit too. I think there looks pretty nice. So those are the basic steps. And if you know those basic steps, you can always change some of the settings in the previous steps. If you want less blur, just change the amount of blur. If you don't want it to be as opaque, just make less layers when you're making the layers to make it more opaque. So you can always adjust those processes. So, but that's the quick process and hopefully that answers your question for <laughs> the person who asked it. And hopefully this is helpful for the rest of you who might've been looking for a solution to this particular problem. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel and check out nuclei.com. I've got a bunch of Photoshop training and tools. And as mentioned at the beginning, if you join my Nuclei Academy, you can get custom tutorials just for you. You're also part of our exclusive community where you, we've got a Q&A. We do weekly Zoom meetups and a whole bunch of other things. So check that out.